Okay, so I'm redoing the intro to this video. Um, turns out, as I was working on getting this video together, um, I'm actually having to redo a lot of it. As I was, I was, I was working on this video, <laughs> uh, Secular Talk dropped one on the very same issue, and that is six days ago, Deval Patrick had a little um, rally, I guess you could say, or he's going to give a speech at Morehouse College. And two people showed up. And they're not going to be in this picture that you're going to see in a little while. But two people showed up to this rally. And so he canceled it. Now, I I'm going to have to redo a lot of the video. Because while I was in the midst of making my original narrative, um, I stopped. And I was like, well, crap. I'm not going to get to jump on this issue today. So I went ahead and watched uh, Kyle's coverage of it, and he made a remark in there that I'll get to in just a minute, and you've heard me say this on my channel multiple times, uh, what my opinion about why all these people are getting in the race is, and we are night and day disagreement on this particular issue. Um, so I'm going to be redoing a lot of the narrative going into this video. Um, if it looks a lot more spliced or something, that that's why. Um, and, and we're going to dive into just how intelligent the establishment really and truly is and, and why I have such a disagreement with Kyle. So let's just go ahead and get straight on into the video now. So right here, you see the room where he was supposed to have this rally. Two people, two people supposedly showed up this thing. Looks like an empty room to me, but supposedly two people showed up to this guy's event. And he thought he had some big movement and, or whatever. He, he thought he was now qualified to run for president. So he's thrown his hat in this late in the game. And this is the sort of crowds that this guy is actually drawing. <laughs> I, think, I think he got a little bit too hopeful because of Bloomberg. And by the way, I know there's a lot of uh, folks in the media trying to blow a lot of smoke up uh, Bloomberg's ass. But Deval Patrick is going nowhere, and quite frankly, I really don't think Bloomberg is going to go anywhere either. I just don't think he fits with where the Democratic voters have gone now that the party has been shunning the working class base on the right and the left, some that went to the right because they felt betrayed by the left many years ago, and a lot of independents. They're, they're, they're not with this corporate centrism, you know, status quo BS anymore, man. They're, they're, they're just not. I think Bloomberg is going to fail miserably. And should he get the nomination, it, it's going to absolutely go horribly for him. It's going to absolutely go horribly for him. And, and, and take this Deval Patrick guy. He doesn't even have the money behind him that Bloomberg has. At least Bloomberg is coming to this with the argument, hey, I'm going to spend all my money, finance my own campaign, blah, 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 blah. But again, policy-wise, people are just not going to flock behind Bloomberg. But the ball, Patrick is like, yeah, so what? I'm going to have to take a bunch of money. Yeah, super PACs, corporatists, um, come on. Help me out now. Help me out. S send me some of that money. Yeah, I I'll take it. Sure. Doesn't bother me a bit. Yeah, that's going to go over so well that yeah that tactic is why you had two people show up to your uh, rally you're going nowhere in a hurry matter of fact you could go down as the person in history to have the shortest run for president ever um, unless you just deliberately stick it out so that you don't go down as the shortest uh, run in history but this this Deval Patrick guy man he, he's going absolutely nowhere now now let's examine this guy for a moment he used to basically be a Mitt Romney stooge. He had he had business dealing with some of uh, Mitt Romney's corporations. He was like this big fancy uh, PR guy or something for Mitt Romney to come in and clean the company up and try to fix their images and crap. Like, really? Really? And so you think that when you were a Mitt Romney corporate ass kisser once upon a time, that's going to get you somewhere in this primary sun. No, 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 no. You are going nowhere in a hurry. Period. Your campaign is going to fail miserably. And and it doesn't matter who gets the nomination, by the way. You 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 see this crowd right here? You see this crowd? 
what kind of crowds are Donald Trump drawing? Let's play devil's advocate for you just a moment, uh, Mr. Patrick, and let's say you did get that nomination. Trump would eviscerate you so bad, it would be embarrassing. Little kids would be getting behind their parents' legs going, because it would be that brutal of a scene. He'd tear you apart. Tear you apart. You can't even get two people, two people to a rally. Some start you got. That, 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 that is some start that you're off to. Some start that you're off. Now, over on Secular Talks video, um, again, as I said at the very beginning of this video, I'm going to have to, uh, I've spliced some new segments in. So Kyle Kalinske elaborated that there is a theory going around right now, and a lot of people are under the impression that the Democrats are having all these candidates flood into the race in order to flood the field so that it goes to a contested convention at the, uh, the DNC convention, and they end up screwing Bernie, you know, Sanders, who's obviously at the front at this point, but I, I'm saying Bernie, Yang, Tulsi, whoever gets the fire, because, I mean, we haven't even hit the first uh, caucus in Iowa yet. Things could change, people. Th things could change. I mean, I know it's a long shot, but, hey, it, it, it's possible, and there is a lot of growing support still behind Tulsi and Andrew Yang, and we will know you know, we, we see what the polls are saying right now, but I just simply don't trust those polls. They were dead wrong about Trump winning in 2016. They all said Hillary was going to, you know, mop the floor with Trump. Eh, she ain't sitting in the White House right now. So we'll know what the truth is once the numbers start coming in from these, uh, you know, early primary states. Um, and, and we'll start seeing just how accurate some of these polls were or were not. Okay. But Kyle said over on Secular Talk that, he does not believe that that is the truth. That the Democratic establishment is simply not that smart to do something like that. That And, and, and what he equivalated their lack of intelligence to was the fact that they could not beat Donald Trump in 2016. Before I go any farther, I have to break this down step by step and point out where my big disagreement is with uh, Kyle on this one. Okay, um, plain and simple, it's not. Uh, you might say it was that they were stupid. I, I mean, I you could say that, but it is not because these people can't add two plus two that they lost to Donald Trump. It's not a matter of, you know, no common sense. Or low IQ. That's what we'll go. It's not a matter of low IQ as to why they couldn't beat Donald Trump. No, 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 no. It's a matter of being stupidly arrogant as to why they did not beat Donald Trump. First of all, when the Democratic establishment went into the 2016 uh, season, well, they had the intention... We're going to let a couple of schmucks run for president besides the almighty queen herself, Hillary Clinton. They're going to go nowhere. They're never going to get off the ground. Nobody knows who they are. And we're off the heels of Obama. We're going to run the big, well-known Hillary Clinton. It's going to go great. And then the unknown Bernie Sanders slipped in the field and they weren't counting on the wildfire he lit in the 2016 season. And he lit a big one. Okay, so then they started rigging the entire thing for Hillary and against Bernie because they were dead set because Hillary had started bankrolling the DNC, basically, that we're all going to just flood behind Hillary. She's the candidate. She's going to be our nominee. She's going to be the next president. We'll rig it. Whoever the Republican is, and eh, it's more likely going to be Jeb Bush, and we'll see Bush versus Clinton, and quite frankly... Either one who wins, eh, toss up, doesn't matter. We're going to get the same thing here regardless. Because we all know that there was not actually that much difference between Bill Clinton and George W. Um, Hillary voted to go to war in Iraq, and of course that's Hillary, but Clinton started the deregulation of Wall Street. Bush continued it, um, you know. 
there and, and, and look at how Bill and, and Bush get along today. Just sit around and joke and crack up like a couple of old buddies. Okay, so yeah, um, the Democratic establishment said, yeah, Jeb Bush has got that in the bag over on that side. The Republicans are going to be the same old Republicans, and it's whatever. And our nominee is going to be Hillary, so we'll probably be looking at Hillary versus Bush. We want Hillary. They want Bush. Eh, we get the same thing here regardless. <laughs> Call it a day. Okay. They got cocky. They got cocky. And the Republicans started trying to figure out how can we rig it for someone else other than Trump. But it was just a little too late. It was just a little too late by the time they got to that part. There were a lot of Republicans hot in their seat because they really probably at the time, I don't think, didn't know just what avenue Donald Trump was going to take. A lot of his rhetoric didn't fit their status quo, you know, middle of the swamp BS. And they're like, oh, God, is this guy really going to get in here and start tearing it apart at the seams? Is he really going to be our nominee? Oh, this is freaking horrible. We, we, no, we, we got to screw him. So that's where all the conspiracies about screwing Trump at the convention came from on the Republican side. And then there was even rumor, I think, back then that they may start a superdelegate system as a result of how nervous they got over Donald Trump. Okay? But they waited until the 11th hour to even start. Too late. Too late. Trump had won too much support. There was a boom behind this guy. And, yeah, they he, he, he was going to be the nominee. And if they had have tried to screw him at that point, Trump was so, you know, brash and outspoken, they, the Republicans knew, like, this is going to tear our party apart. I mean, we're, we're, we're caught between a rock and a hard place here. So Trump won the battle with the Republicans. Bernie, trying to be a nice guy, and I'm not faulting him for that, he lost the battle to the Democrats very clearly in 2016 as a result of the fact he then endorsed Hillary after they screwed him for Hillary. So they got overconfident. But then all the establishment sat back and looked at that and said, oh, please. Yeah, just, just that far base, the far right, that, that's all that's going to fall behind Trump. No one wants this guy. He's not presidential. He's not presidential. He's too insulting. He's too rude. He makes too much of an ass out of himself. He looks like too much of a buffoon. Blah, 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 blah. And they said, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. Hillary's got this in the bag. This guy jumps from talking points. She's going to stay on point. Nah, Hillary's got this. And then every poll in the land that had any sort of, you know, reputation to it from having accuracy, basically, was coming out and saying that Hillary was going to whip Trump up one side and down the other. Then, of course, the, uh, the, the, the Billy Bush tape came out. Grab him by the, hmm, okay. That, that whole thing came out. Trump got really, really flustered. Things got a, even more of a mess. That whole thing turned ugly. And all of them were sitting like, come on, man. Come on, man. Hillary's about to kick your ass. She's going to walk all over you in this election. They got cocky. Kyle, you of all people should know that because you were saying that at the time. Right? They lost. They lost, Kyle. They, they lost. Now, the Democratic establishment does not want Donald Trump to get elected again. They want their corporate person to get elected. But the problem with their corporate candidates are they're not getting over with the people. Bernie Sanders got in in 2016, and he has changed the game on the Democratic forefront. Now you've got three good candidates running on the Democratic side, that there's a lot of grassroots support behind. They're not taking corporate money. And, of course, one's doing way better than the other two at this point. But that's not to say we may see a swing at some point. I'm hoping for it anyway. I really am. Okay? But the Democrats are smart enough to know, okay, yep, 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 yep. Very clearly, we sent the signal, we screwed Bernie in 2016, blah, 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 blah. We're going to make it look like we're not going to screw this time. So when Bernie ran this time, that's why they said the super, dele uh, super delegates won't vote on the first ballot. But do you think, truly, truly, the people who created a system like that, the people 
and their donors who are manipulating mainstream media to keep pushing these propaganda talking points and kissing ass to, to the elites. They're smart enough for all that. You really think they would have made that uh, deal and let Bernie Sanders wheel and deal on to get rid of those superdelegates on the first ballot and not try to have some insurance policy in place that if Bernie was doing good enough to possibly win the nomination that they would set something up so that it would go to a second ballot and then let the superdelegates vote? I mean, if that's what you think, if you think they're really that stupid, hey, to each their own, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. I, however, do not. I, however, do not. The, the elites are dumb. But they're not that dumb. They're not that dumb. They didn't build this system of corruption that works for them because they have an IQ of two. They're smart enough to rig the system. They're smart enough to cheat. They're smart enough to do that. And I, I'm sorry. Disagree with me only if you want to, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and I'm not trying to have any sort of issue with any 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 of my subscribers who also watch, watch Secular Talk Channel. I still watch the guy to this day. I still intend to. Simple disagreement on, on, on the issues here, though. Simple disagreement on the issues. The, the Democratic establishment is definitely smart enough to try and keep having all these people jump in the race so that it causes a contested convention when it comes down to the wire. I mean, uh, they're, 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 I, in my opinion, this, they, they are smart enough for that. And if they were completely that dumb, they wouldn't be trying to rig anything. If they were if they were really that dumb, and here, here's going to be my final kind of argument to that point before I wrap this whole thing up. If the Democratic establishment was not a smart group of folks and were really just genuinely that dumb, Okay, we'll take your word for it and we'll say they are for a moment, okay? Why rig anything? Why rig anything? Because they would believe that when the news tells people so-and-so's a Russian agent, so-and-so's a socialist, so-and-so just wants to give out free money and it can't be done, but so-and-so's got a good plan, so-and-so's had the experience, so-and-so's great, so-and-so's more centrist, she can win Republican votes, all these People like Klobuchar, Booker, Biden, Buttigieg. The news has been kissing their ass on behalf of the Democratic establishment. And so if they were genuinely just a bunch of blockheads all the way around, then why rig anything? Because they think, well, these people listen to the news. They listen to the news on a daily basis. Eh, they'll believe it. They'll believe it. They're a bunch of sheep. Oh, hey. Biden was Obama's VP, and the people loved Obama. Case closed. Case closed. So what if he mumbles around on stage? Ah, man, man. Obama will endorse him by the end of it. Ah, let it go. Let it go. Why rig anything? Why rig anything in 2016? At the time, Bill Clinton was a loved president when he was in office. Agree with him on policy or not, the man was over. He was popular. Okay. Very, very popular, okay? And Hillary Clinton was part of Obama's administration. Okay? She was leading in all the polls. She, she, was, she was leading in, in the polls. Why did they rig that system against Bernie in 2016? Fox News is calling this man a socialist. All these other news networks are trying to ignore him. Even fire Ed Schultz on MSNBC for even trying to cover Bernie Sanders. Why rig it? Why rig it? Why rig it? Conventional wisdom and status quo knowledge said nobody's going to know who he is. Everybody's going to know what Hillary's for and we're going to hype it up to no end and kiss her ass. Huh, they'll vote for her. They'll vote for her. Because they're not that stupid. They're just not that dumb and they're not that stupid. They, now... Maybe it is because they're just trying to find a replacement for Joe Biden and they're, ex you know, pulling out all the stops to find a good corporate replacement for Joe Biden. And that is also a high possibility, but I think it's a double-sided plan. I think you've got something along those lines, while at the same time saying, even if nobody can replace Biden 
and pull ahead of people like Bernie or Yang or Tulsi or whatever, and, and no one can decisively take off in popularity ahead of these three, um, then here's what's going to happen. We're going to keep these court people in, even though they have no chance of winning it clear. It'll be a contested convention. And then the superdelegates, which they've had for a long, long time, will then get the opportunity to jump in, steal it, and give it to who they want to. Pure and simple. Pure and simple. Uh, again, if, if you disagree with me on that, beautiful thing about a free country is you're entitled to disagree with me on that. But that that's my stance on that. And in light of, this was going to be a much shorter video just about old, old, old goofball Deval Patrick. Once I saw that and then I heard that, you know, I heard Kyle say he didn't agree with that. I was like, mm. you know, even though I've got a, a fraction of this guy's followers, if there's any of my, you know, my subscribers out there who watched that video, I wanted to give my rebuttal to that. Don't underestimate these corporate goofs that are in charge of the Democratic establishment. Because while we all think, like I just use the term goof, I just use the term goof because they are. But they're still smart enough and conniving enough to set a scheme and put it in motion and try and screw things over. What they're dumb enough still on is that they think that one of these days that the people aren't going to get too fed up and that there's going to be a big revolution if they keep it on. They think that because they're the elites, they can just do it and get away with it. And they may even get away with it this time. Sooner or later, something is going to finally trigger the people in this country when they keep getting crapped on by these elites. And unless... We get someone decent on that nominee side in the Democratic primary this season. If they try and go to that well again, this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back here. But don't think that they're too dumb to concoct a plan like that. Because this is the elites. And they've been in power for a long time. You don't keep power and keep people down that long of a period of time by being utter and complete blockheads that have an IQ of 